Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in today's video I'm going to explain spinners in JavaFX, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, I guess we're talking about spinners today. A spinner is a single line text field that allows a user to select a number or an object value from an ordered sequence. They are also provided with a pair of arrow buttons so that we can step through the elements of that sequence. Now, there's not a lot of customizations that we can do with spinners, one, we can make this editable by checking this checkbox, so a user will be able to type in an element from our collection that we're going to add to the spinner. So let's add a unique ID to the spinner. Let's call it my spinner. And later on, we'll add the numbers one through 10, something simple, and we'll change the text of a label to reflect whatever element we choose with our spinner. Now let's add a label, and we're going to change the text of this label to match the value that is selected within our spinner here. So let me just increase the font size, expand this, and then center it. And I will give this label a unique ID of my label. So make sure that you add your controller class, and let's save and head to our controller class. Update your fxml file, head to your controller class. We're going to implement the initializable interface. And we need to add any unimplemented methods. And let's declare everything that we'll need. So at fxml private spinner my spinner. Now we're going to add a generic type. We're going to make a spinner of numbers. So let's add a generic type of integer. We'll just add the numbers one through 10, but we'll need to populate our spinner within our initialize method. At fxml private label my label. And let's create an integer variable to hold the current value. So let's say int current value. Now within the initialize method, we're going to create what is called a spinner value factory. So what this does is that the spinner value factory handles all aspects of the spinner, including representing the current state of the value, incrementing and decrementing the value with one or more steps per call, converting the text input from the user, and converting objects to user-readable strings for displaying on the screen. So basically, without a spinner value factory, a spinner is an empty husk. It's unusable. Now, to be able to use a spinner, we need to add a spinner value factory. And here's how. Let's declare a spinner value factory, and we will list a generic type of integer because we're working with integers for this example. Let's call this value factory equals, and this is going to be a very long line, new spinner value factory dot, and list the data type they are going to work with. We're going to work with integers. So integer spinner value factory, and we will add the minimum and maximum values that we can choose from the spinner value factory. So if we want the numbers one through 10, we'll list that here as the minimum and the maximum. Just to make this a little more readable, since this line is fairly long, I'm just going to hit enter right after the equals, just so that we can read these lines both together. Now let's set the default value for our value factory. Value factory dot set value to, let's say one. Now we need to add our value factory to our spinner. So we will type my spinner dot set value factory and pass in your value factory. Now at this point, let's run our program just to be sure that we can at least interact with our spinner. So since we added our spinner value factory to our spinner, we should at least be able to interact with it. So we have the numbers one through 10 because we set that as the minimum and the maximum values. Now let's change the text of our label to reflect the default value within our spinner. So we're gonna take current value and set this equal to my spinner dot get value and change the text of our label to reflect the current value. So take my label dot set text equal to current value, but we'll need to convert this to a string. So type integer dot to string and surround your current value. Our label should reflect the current value. So we have one here, 
but when we interact with our spinner, we need to be able to update the text of this label. So we need to add a change listener to our spinner. So that'll be the last line. So take my spinner dot then value property dot add listener and we're going to pass in an anonymous change listener new change listener the generic of integer parentheses curly braces then add any unimplemented methods so when we interact with our spinner what are we going to do let's update the text of our label as well as update the current value so let's copy these two lines of code and paste it within our changed method so now we should be able to update our label every time that we step through the elements of our spinner so we have one two three all the way up to ten well all right everybody in conclusion a spinner is a single line text field that is provided with a pair of arrow buttons so that we can step through the elements of a sequence if you would like a copy of all this code i will post this to the comment section down below but yeah, those are spinners in JavaFX.